in the 19th century, communication was a word primarily associated with the transmission of goods. And before the development of the railways, rivers were the main ways that materials and information were transported or communicated. As you can see, logs were one item that were easily transported down rivers. Every now and then, however, those logs might get blocked, forming what we call a log jam. And a log jam is something that makes communication impossible. The idea that communication involves the flow of something, that this flow can be blocked and may require facilitation to be unblocked, is the same today. And one area where this is most obvious is the domain of intercultural communication. According to the Journal of International Project Management, intercultural communication is the greatest challenge facing international managers. Now, this should not surprise us, because we face the same challenge at a more mundane level. The majority of us are Europeans, and yet, if we were honest, we would say that we have difficulty communicating with our European neighbours. I've been living in France for the last 25 years, and I still have difficulty communicating with the French. You only have to ask my wife for confirmation. And um, if, like me, we uh, sometimes have difficulty defining ourselves, because I've been living in France for the last 25 years, and I've lived more of my life in France than I have in Ireland, yet I still define myself as Irish. And if we may have difficulty defining who we are, we have very li little difficulty defining who we are not. We are not like the others, people from other cultures. And this is because we generally view people from other cultures in a negative light. As an example, let me ask the question. Who in Europe do we consider to be cold, pretentious, arrogant snobs? The answer, of course, is the English. And apart from the English, not many of us want to be English. I mean, who amongst us would like to be considered as a cold, arrogant, pretentious snob? Now, strangely enough, this propensity to view people from other cultures in a negative and reductionist light is actually quite normal. Psychologists tell us that we have a natural tendency to want to put people into boxes and to keep them there. Carl Jung says that this is part of what he calls our shadow, or our dark side. And even if we have difficulty admitting it, we all have a dark side. Now, we don't have time this evening to go into how we develop boxes for people from different cultures and so on. But one track I would encourage you to explore is how the media portrays what is going on in other countries. You will notice that the media tends to focus on the negative news. The media have learned from the German word Schad Schadenfreude that the pleasure we get from the misfortune of others is something that sells almost as good as sex. Now, how this impacts intercultural communication is that the normal convention for improving the situation is to analyze the culture of the people we want to communicate with. So, if I want to do business in China, I will first of all analyze the Chinese culture. But this is not always the good way to go about it, because of our dark side. The power of prejudice means that the majority of us are poor 
intercultural communicators. What I suggest is to turn the normal convention upside down. And my inspiration doesn't come from the psychologists, it comes from the philosophers. Gnoti seauten is an expression we associate with Socrates, though he is not the author. And know yourself means that the first person or culture we should analyze is our own. This is important because in the communication process, the encoding and decoding of messages is very much influenced by our dark side. I call these influences our dysfunctional drivers. Now, if we were in Ireland, I would probably use as an example the Irish, the deep-seated inferiority complex of the Irish as an example of a dysfunctional driver. But because we're in France, I want to take an example from French culture and to look for clues so as to improve the intercultural communication process from a French perspective. Now, the example I want to talk about is our angst-ridden education system. Now, I'm not saying that French educational institutions provoke anxiety. Not at all. Anxiety pervades French culture for many complex and historical reasons. The education system only serves to highlight this. It is not a direct cause. The education system in France is designed a little like a pyramid. And at the top of the pyramid are the Grande Ecole. And from an anxiety perspective, the Grande Ecole signify guaranteed employment and guaranteed status. Many French parents want their children to get into a Grande Ecole. They love their children and they want their children to have a secure future. So, they keep reminding them to work hard at school because the process to get into a Grande Ecole is very difficult and very stressful. Unfortunately, what the parents also communicate is their anxiety. And anxious parents make for anxious children, even if this anxiety remains at a subconscious level. We can see this in the results of a PISA study from 2012, which shows that French school pupils are amongst the most stressed in the world, with nearly 50% of them saying that they don't feel well at school. Another indicator is the number of young people in France who aspire to a job in the public sector. Over 70% of high school graduates in France think that the best option for their future is a low-paying job with poor career prospects. So, there is a subconscious anxiety in French culture, and concomitant with this anxiety comes a need to control that anxiety. Now, what this has to do with intercultural communication is obvious. When we encounter people from other cultures, we very quickly perceive that there are differences. There are differences in the way we speak, in the words we use and how we use them. There are differences in our appearance, in our dress code, in our values, in our beliefs. These differences inject a certain uncertainty into the communication process. They can be a little destabilizing. It's a little like riding a log down a river during a log drive. Our response to these differences will depend on, will determine whether the log goes to form a log jam or whether we keep the flow of communication going and reach our mutual objective. An unfortunate way is to allow the communication process to be driven by our anxiety. Instead of focusing with, on the anxiety, when anxiety drives the process, we tend to either ignore the person we're speaking with, pretend to like them, we avoid communicating with them, 
or we act in a hostile way towards them. One way or the other, this leads to a jamming of the communication process. The way out is to apply the intercultural communication principle that the psychologist, philosopher, and religious leader, Jesus Christ, speaks about when he says, first, remove the log from your own eye. We have to work on this log. We have to recognize and take responsibility for our anxiety, an anxiety that comes from our values, our beliefs, our culture. The differences we experience and meet when we encounter people from other cultures may cause us to have feelings of anxiety. And there is nothing fundamentally wrong with feeling anxious. What is wrong is when we see the differences of others as the cause of that anxiety. This is the log we have to remove. And when we focus on the deep sources of the dysfunctional drivers, dysfunctional drivers such as anxiety in France, poor self-image in Ireland, but others, dysfunctional drivers such as honor and shame in about half of the world, drivers such as guilt, drivers such as saving face. And when we focus on trying to attenuate or reduce the impact of these dysfunctional drivers, will be well on the way to developing the skills to keep the flow going in the river of intercultural communication. Thank you.